Hey, does that feel good when you hit the ground? Oh, come on. <laughs> Someone thought he could ice skate. Hey there, YouTube. Hope everyone's doing all right. Uh, here it is Saturday afternoon, and we are going to go down and feed some cows right quick. Uh, I fed them two days ago, two or three days ago. But um, anyhow, we're going to feed them again today and uh, just kind of check on them, see how they're doing, check their water. And uh, this is the field where the pasture, I mean, the pasture that they do have a pond. They, they actually have two ponds they can drink out of. So, um, with that being said, I'm not too worried about if they're getting water. I just want to make sure that, you know, they're... Um, they're doing okay. Um, they should have plenty of hay still. And um, like I said, they should be in good shape. I'm just go ahead and feed them. Like I said, I fed them two or three days ago. I'm gonna feed them again. Uh, they have the liquid feed. Um, one thing I did forget to mention is uh, with the liquid feed, I was telling you how there's a, uh, someone put salt or uh, fish oil in their um, feeders like that. What happens is cows naturally do not want to hustle they want to do as little as possible and so what happens is if they didn't put salt or fish oil in it they would just sit there and eat it till it's gone uh, that's just how they are they don't care they don't think about whether it's good for them or not they'll get sick and uh, you know can be disastrous honestly so what they do is they put salt or in this case liquid feed has fish oil in it and what that does it it leaves like an aftertaste in their mouth it leaves a taste in their mouth and as they're hungry their hunger is more powerful than their distaste or dislike of the fish oil now as they're licking that lick and they become full then it's no now it's not about the how bad they need it it's about the taste so that's when the fish oil comes into place. It comes into play. Uh, they don't like the way it tastes. The fish oil, it's fishy, it smells, it tastes weird. So um, when they've had what they need, then they go elsewhere. They'll go, okay, they know, hey, this stuff don't taste that good anymore. I'm gonna go and eat some grass or some hay or something. And that's why one of the worst things you can do when feeding uh, a creep feed or a liquid feed is to put it near your water trough. Uh, many times the water trough is near the pins, that's where the gate is, therefore most people put their, those uh, types of feeders uh, near those. Well what happens is um, they'll eat those things and when they get enough of that nasty taste in their mouth they go off, well they'll get a drink. Well guess what? Now they're rinsing their mouth off. So guess what? They're gonna go back to that flavor, to that uh, liquid feed, and uh, it they won't eat enough to get sick most time in that situation. But they're not getting pushed to go out and hustle to get the hay or get whatever kind of winter grass you might have, or any kind of forage that might be out there. They just want to go from the feeder to the trough, the water trough, to the hay, and. You know, I see that many many times, many places. You know, when it's winter time, the cows don't move more than maybe, you know, maybe four acres altogether. And there's grass out there. They're just not trying to go out and get it. So uh, anyway, uh, the best thing to do is to put them far enough away that, uh, you know, you make some hustle. So anyhow, we're gonna check them. I'm gonna go try to shut the gate before they uh, stampede and uh we'll go from there so anyway after we get done with this we'll go to my grandparents house and my son's playing dominoes and stuff so anyhow we'll uh we'll go feed the cows real quick all right so i got here and i got the cows pinned out of the uh trap so now we're gonna put some hay out for them not sorry not hay <laughs> feed I'm gonna, I'm gonna put the second bag in dump it and then they'll uh I'll let them in. So let me put my hazards on because I hear a car coming. All right, so 
I put the uh, second bag of feed out for him. Now we're gonna go in and dump it. And then I'll let him input. So. Hello, babies. Hello, babies. Hello, girls. Easy. Hey there, little one. So I'm gonna put the feet out and uh, let them in here, so. Now we'll let them in. They're all looking real good. There's 26 of them here. So, I forgot what they called this little winter storm we had. They gave it a name actually, I'm surprised. But anyway, they didn't claim anything from this pasture. So, that's a good win on our part. So anyhow, let's uh, look at some of the cows. The red one that's eating right now, she um, she has a calf on her. I think it's I think it's her second calf, but she's doing real good. You can tell her body condition looks really nice. I really don't see any cows that have a poor uh, what do you call it body score for being February. We'll uh, walk out and maybe these calves will go in there. Maybe these bags. Try not to spook them too much. Yellow babies. Yellow babies.
Hello, baby. That's doing good. Pretty little heifer. Check on the water. My dad and uncle, they uh, came over today and worked on the water leak that was under my grandparents' house. So they got it going. It's 50 something degrees outside. Water is back to normal. All is right. Everything looks real good. Now, this is kind of what I was talking about. You have that feeder right there, and you know they have they have the, the feeder right there that has you know like the fish oil in it, and it's just literally a short walk to the water trough that's right there, and then the hay bales. All I gotta do is just come right out here. <clears throat> and they still have enough. I work to, to uh, let's see. I work tomorrow, and then I'll be off Monday. So Monday I'll come back out here, and Monday I'll come out here and put some more hay out. If not Monday, then Tuesday. But one of those days, I'll put some more out. They're down to about well that hay ring right there. It's about. I don't know 70% full and then at one time I had eight bales out here because I had to go to work for multiple days in a row in fact they uh to keep everyone safe they had to stay at work so they actually got the they, we got paid to stay at work and I am happy that they uh they did think about us and they didn't want us on the road and uh in danger anyone us or whoever else might be on the road so I'm very appreciative of that. So anyhow. Um, but now it's plenty of hay. In this, at least for a day or two. And then... So there was the hay behind me. And over here, they go right back in this pen. Where they have the water trough over there. And then the feed tub over there. So, most of these cows, uh, they can get lazy, and they'll just stand in this area. They all, all the calves went in. I'm very happy to see. And uh, one day next week, when I'm off and it's not freezing, which it should, I don't think we're going to freeze anymore this winter, but, um, we will, um, I cut a lot of limbs and stuff with the uh, pole saw. And now I just got to get my chainsaw out here and cut them up into manageable pieces. I started over there and then my, um, the chain came off the bar. And of course I didn't have any of my tools with me. To put the chain back on it's i mean it's not it's an easy fix i just got to do it so anyhow there's the, the cows doing their thing they seem very happy and i just leave it like that i don't i don't try to push them back out and and uh shut the gate that's Sometimes people do that, and there's nothing wrong with that. It's just, I like keeping them where they can get stuff. It helps keep the weeds down and the grass and everything else. It just keeps it cleaner. All right, All right so let's go to my grandparents and see how everyone's doing. And apparently, my youngest one, Liam, my youngest son, 
uh, they showed him how to play dominoes and now apparently he is a huge fan so i'm gonna go over there and see how he's doing here's the shaft that came off that uh flex right on one of my first view videos you can see in there the um the part of the tractor that actually broke is right there but i tried pulling this thing apart and it's not I and mean, you can see where it got galled up so i'm hoping it's just one part that's messed up i don't have to replace the whole thing but if i do i do and then the hydraulic hose that's on top that goes to my 15 foot shredder <clears throat> i just have to get that put back on so plenty of honeydews that i need to do or to do's not honeydews <clears throat> Well, um, what a, I know I made a video about the freeze and how it did. Uh, ultimately, the only damage that happened from the freeze um, at our house, not really, knock on wood, I had no problems. Uh, we lost power. When we lose power, we lose the water well. But luckily, uh, we had one pipe that got froze, but it was just a dead end line, but it didn't bust and the house never lost water i mean once the power came back on we had water so um very thankful and blessed that nothing bad happened it could have been really bad but anyhow uh, a lot of people further up north they had all kinds of damage on their house and for that i'm very very thankful that we don't have to go through that we were able to save my mom and dad's so I don't know if they watch this video or not, but they do. If they do watch it, thank y'all very much for letting me and my family stay with y'all. And uh, we enjoyed it. And anyway, um, nothing really happened at their place either. Uh, my, my grandparents, they lost uh, power like we did in their water well. And because of that, um, they lost their water pressure. And when the power came back on, they actually had a few busted pipes. One of them I was able to fix pretty quick. It was a real easy fix at the end, you know, it was right next to the wall. Today, my dad and uncle, they fixed the one that was further under the house, which I appreciate them doing that too. So, uh, dad, if you're watching, thank you. And uh, I don't know if my uncle Clarence watches these videos or not, but if he do, thank you very much, Uncle Clarence. So, I know it wasn't easy and I imagine it was probably muddy. So, anyhow, I appreciate everything y'all do. And I know grandma, great grandma, great grandpa do too. So, anyhow, I'm fixing to pull up to their house. We're going to go in there, check out what's going on, spend a little time with the fam. And then we'll go home and have a relaxing night. I got one more day of work and then I'll be off. So, anyway, thank y'all very much. All right, so I'm going to go in here in a minute and I'm going to, I'll probably bring my, my GoPro in there and take a few videos and see my son playing dominoes with grandma and grandpa or his great grandma great grandma great grandma and great grandpa or whoever it is that plays with them but uh anyway while it's still daylight i just want to tell y'all thank y'all for watching the video um uh, sorry about the noise my radio from work <laughs> battery's getting low but anyhow um i appreciate y'all watching if y'all would hit that like subscribe button uh share it comment let me know what you like um i cannot wait for summertime spring i'm ready to do some uh work out in the hay fields um i enjoy a little bit of time from the uh getting out of the field but right now i'm ready to get back in so anyhow um thank y'all for everything i do thank you for all y'all's help all y'all's support um you know we're slowly growing and that's awesome you know i got a lot more subscribers than i thought i already did i would so i'm already impressed and uh couldn't do it without y'all's help so anyhow um love y'all and we will catch y'all later bye